I'm Edie Lush and I'm here in the Hub Culture Davos Pavilion and I'm here with Sandy Pentland from the MIT Media Lab. Thanks for coming by. My pleasure. Tell me about social physics. Well, we've had social sciences forever and the problem is that they haven't really had much data so they ask a bunch of freshmen with surveys. But now we have big data off of things like cell phones and, and credit cards and while that's problematic uh, when you're talking about companies, it's gold for social, for social science because for the first time we have enough data to really understand people. Mm -hmm. And that's what social physics is. It's actually turning all those social sciences into real predictive sciences. So as an example, mm -hmm. um, we took a social network of people that were trading you know, dollars versus euros, forex it's mm -hmm. called, and we looked at the pattern of social interaction on that network mm -hmm. and we said, oh, these guys are all just talking in circles. Right. Why don't what we do is sort of break it up a little bit so that mm -hmm. they have more diverse information and we gave people coupons to make them do that mm -hmm. and they doubled the amount of money they made. So you gave them coupons by making them talk to people, specific people outside their network. That's right. Or specific people who also had better connections. What was Well, it was just to make their more information more okay. diverse because that was the key. If you have really diverse sources of information, mm -hmm. you make better choices, you make more money. Okay. So then where have you gone with these experiments? Well, we've taken this in companies and looked at how people work. Uh, for instance, we went into a call center and, mm -hmm. and got people to talk to each other more. Literally and, talk to each other at the water cooler. Yeah, stuff that the boss didn't like. Right. But it turned out that everyone was more productive and happier, which is maybe sort of obvious, but right. here's one that isn't. Uh -huh. um, we have looked at some 300 cities now and looked at the pattern of face-to-face -face communication in mm -hmm. the city. And what we find is the pattern of face-to-face -face communication predicts how rich the city is, the GDP. So it seems that the more ideas bang together, particularly face to face, mm -hmm. the more innovation you get mm -hmm. and the better uh, uh, creative and productive the city is. So maybe your grandmother could have told you this, yep, absolutely. But, but now the data and the math shows that that's how you make a creative city. You get more ideas banging together. So obviously this is great and social networks can help us do this, but then we come up against the problem about privacy. Yeah, so privacy is the big thing. So it's wonderful to do science with this stuff, but how are you going to actually do this in the real world? And that's a lot of what I do here at Davos, Davos is thinking about how to put people more in control of their data. And we've actually constructed living labs, like for instance we have one in Trento in Italy, where we've worked with the telephone companies and other companies to make people in control of their data rather than the company in control mm -hmm. of it. And as a consequence, they feel more safe about sharing, mm -hmm. sort of like safe sex. Yeah. And as a result, they do more of it. And remember, more banging of ideas together, mm -hmm. more innovation, more happy. And everybody wins. That's what we see. Yep. Sandy, thank you so much for coming and being our partner here at the Hub Culture My pleasure. Pavilion in Davos. Thank you. I'm Edie Lush.